Hey Sydney, how's it going? <laughs> Fuck yes. It's the Sydney Comedy Festival Gala. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> a rumor went round last year that I was going to be one of the one of the new hosts of Play School. This is true. Can you imagine me, a host of Play School? Fuck no. I uh, I hate kids. No way. A host of Play School. No way. Admittedly, I have said the phrase "there's a bear in there" before, but you know, <laughs> that was leaving a nightclub in Berlin <laughs> and a chair as well. Careful, it's got a hole in the bottom. You might get a surprise. Open wide, come inside. Hey, you have stepped over the line already, and I like it. Welcome. Um, I am a homosexual. Sorry, ladies. And, um, you know, gay men always get asked the same... We do get asked always the same questions. Like, when did you know you were gay? And have you ever had sex with a woman? And should I buy this dress? And the answer is no, Sarah, you look fat. And... <laughs> but, like, I find that question, like, when did you know you were gay, so tricky to answer? Because, like, clearly, like, there was never a question. Like, I always knew I was gay. Like, like first of all, I was born looking like Ellen DeGeneres. So, I mean... <laughs> There wasn't a lot of hope. But, like, I always... Like, like, like people go, like, when did you know? I'm like, maybe, very, like, maybe when I was five and I thought the Teletubbies were too butch. Was it then? Like, <laughs> was it when I was eight? <laughs> and just break it down and think about how gay this is for a second. When I was eight, I used to always cry at the end of 101 Dalmatians when Cruella de Vil didn't win. <laughs> Why? Because I was upset she wasn't going to get the puppy coat. I was like, kill the fucking puppies, give, 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 give close the coat. It's a beautiful coat, she looked great in the coat. Fuck the puppies, mum. Mum, she's like, you're not watching that film anymore. <laughs> that was a bit of a red flag for mum. Or rainbow flag, I should say. Oh, I'm good, aren't I? Uh, like, maybe I knew I was gay when I was three, and my mum was singing me Mary Had a Little Lamb, and I said, do you know anything from cats? I, uh... <laughs> Maybe I knew I was gay when I was one and my mum was breastfeeding me and I stopped her and I said, look, lady, let's just be friends. Like, I've always... <laughs> no. So then people go, like, what was you coming out like? like? What was you coming out like? And I had pictured it being so dramatic and awesome, right? Like, I was 16 and I, I, like, I, I pictured that I was going to sit my parents down and be like, mum and dad, I'm gay. And they'd be like, get out of here, you little homo. I'd be like, oh, how could you? And then I'd run away from home for two weeks. And then two weeks later, they'd come to their senses and come and find me. And I'd be on a street corner being like, it's a hard knock life for us. <laughs> Full choreography, backing dancers, ticketed event. Um, <laughs> cute ushers. Didn't work that way. Um, it didn't work that way because they're nice, right? This is how it worked, right? I was 16. I sat my parents down. And I was like, mum and dad, um, um, I'm gay. And they go, cool. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> they said, cool. We're having pasta for dinner. <laughs> I said, oh, I don't think you heard me. I said, I'm gay. I can't eat fucking carbs anymore, can I? Get this right, so get this. Uh, I live in Melbourne, I'm so sorry. And um, I live in Melbourne, and um, there's, I, I live in Docklands in Melbourne, right, which is the part that nobody lives in. That's when that wheel is, that doesn't really work. And, um, and the Costco. I live near the Costco, that's my local supermarket. So if I run a toothpaste, I can't just go buy one, two, I have to buy 50. Like, everyone's a bit nervy with what's going on in North Korea. I'm, I'm set, I could live in my apartment for 20 years. And. <laughs> Get this, right? So in my building, because it's like a concrete jungle, Docklands, in my building there's three other gay men, right? And I walked out, worked out that for the past two years, every Wednesday, they've been having a dinner party and not inviting me. <laughs> right? They call it Gay Dinner Party Wednesday. I'm like, well, get me there, I'll fix the name for you, why not? We'll just go with Wednesday or something clean like that, right? And... <laughs> And I discovered this because every Wednesday after dinner they post a photo of their dinner on Instagram and they're those people as well that um, they always have to hashtag everything that's in the photo. Like, pro tip, if there's chicken in your photo, you don't necessarily need to hashtag it, right? Like, if there's a nap napkin in the photo, you don't need to hashtag napkin. In the history of Instagram, nobody has ever checked the napkin hashtag, right? So... <laughs> I get quite obsessed with a dinner party. I'm like, why am I getting invited? So I'm like, right, I'm quite a competitive person, as you can probably tell. And um, so I'm like, right, I'm going to have a competing dinner party every Wednesday. So I invited, like, started inviting all my lesbian girlfriends around every Wednesday, but that's tricky, isn't it? Because they're all gluten intolerant and wheat intolerant and fun intolerant. And, you know... <laughs> it gets to, like, 7.30pm and Ruth's like, oh, I've got to go feed the cats. And... <laughs> You know, because they're getting up to do real things the next day. Like, let's be honest. Like, heterosexuals and gay men, lesbians are better than us. Let's be honest. Like, who runs the world? Lesbians. Beyonce, fix your lyrics, right? So... <laughs> 
So anyway, that doesn't work. So I start getting so obsessed with the dinner. I still haven't had an invite to the gay dinner party. Still says, still says. I start tweeting about it every week, right? A few months later, I'm on the project on Channel 10, like trying to plug some TV show that I'm on. And Carrie Bickmore, who follows me on Twitter, goes, have you had an invite to the dinner party yet? And I'm like, no. <laughs> right, and I'm off for four minutes. Forget about the TV show I'm plugging. My neighbours were watching that night. <laughs> So the next morning, I get an official invite in my letterbox to next Wednesday's dinner party, and it's, uh, it's their Thanksgiving dinner, because it was last November, and it turns out they were American. To be honest, I didn't actually know they were gay, but, you know, I had my suspicions, because, you know, I'd seen them on Grindr. And, uh, <laughs> bit of a giveaway, and... So, I was like, right, and also, oh, also as well, in the, in, the, in the invitation was glitter, and, you know, everyone goes like, oh, gay men love glitter. No, no we respect it and know it can be used as a weapon. It's the gay anthrax, right? Because if you put glitter in an invitation, you're not getting that shit off your hands for five days. So if I see them in the lift, I'm caught glitter-handed, aren't I? I'm like, oh, I've got the invitation, I'm definitely coming to the dinner party, I can't wait, right? So, <laughs> purple, fun, <laughs> that's so Thanksgiving. And... So I accept the invitation and the following Wednesday, I go round to the dinner party and I'm very nervous, so I have a bottle of wine in my apartment first. And that's maybe where shit hit the fan. Uh, <laughs> Because, as you'll soon see, it went downhill very fast. Um, so I go down to their apartment, and um, I go in, and everything's slightly off, right? Like, they had outdoor furniture as indoor furniture, and there was one of those red Donald Trump Make America Great Again hats on the kitchen counter. And this was just after he'd won the election last November. But, because it was around Halloween, I was like, oh my God, who wants Trump for Halloween? <laughs> no laugh, right? And I was like, oh, tough crowd. And... So I sit down for dinner and they put dinner in front of everyone. I'm like, oh, I'll make sure to hashtag fork. <laughs> no laugh. And so I'm drinking, 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 drinking. I'm very nervous. And mm, hashtag beef, yum. Mm, undercooked too. Drink, 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 drink for everyone. Drink, drink, drink. Uh, then one of them goes to, to do a toast, right? And he goes, cheers to Trump. Uh, what? And he goes, cheers to Trump. They all start cheesing to Trump. Turns out they were gay American Donald Trump supporters. I was like, ah! And I was like, oh my God, how? What? You're like a unicorn, right? And <laughs> Now here's a fun fact about me. I actually went to uni and I studied political science and foreign affairs, but I don't tell people that very often because I feel like it's a little bit off-brand. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just pretend I did drugs for three years. Way cooler, right? And for schoolies, right? For schoolies. When I graduated grade 12, you know, like, what do kids do these days? Instead of going, like, you know, what do they do? Go to the Gold Coast or to Bali to, Bali to be racially insensitive and finger people. I didn't do any of that. <laughs> I was like, mm, not for me, thanks, but bring me back a DVD. I, instead, when I was 17, flew myself to LA to campaign for Hillary Clinton the first time she was running for the Democratic nomination against Barack Obama. So I'm quite a big Hillary Clinton fan. So now I'm at this Trump dinner party, being like, at a Trump Hillary losing the election dinner party, being like, ah, 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 ah. cheers to Trump, drink, 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 drink. Right, now, you are 100% allowed to judge me for this next sentence. And I am very aware it is probably the most disgusting sentence you will hear this year. I ended up having an orgy with them. And I know <laughs> you didn't think it was going to be that bad. Oh, it is, right? I know you're not meant to fuck Trump supporters, but suddenly dicks were out, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be rude. And you know what I mean? It's like an after dinner event. You've had one, you've had the whole packet. And suddenly dicks were out. We're all kind of going for it. And I'll throw like the hashtag plate off the table. and. Then we move into their bedroom, and you know, four grown men in a bedroom is very tight, especially when their apartment's a little bit smaller than yours. And so we're all in the bedroom, and look, I don't know if you've ever been banging a guy, but all you, you can hear in your head is Hillary Clinton's voice. But God, that is weird, right? Because I'm going for it, but all I can hear is Hillary Clinton. I'm like, oh, Hillary, get out of there. And this guy goes, my name's Jonathan. I'm like, no, you're fine. And it was all very weird. And then I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, I hate myself. This is disgusting, Joel. You're a Hillary Clinton supporter, but more than that, you're a feminist. You have to get out of here. But I didn't know what to do. I'm like, right, I'm just going to make a run for it. So I stood up on the bed mid orgy which kind of confused everyone really threw literally threw one of them off me and I didn't know what to do so I just sort of like finished myself off and I just sort of took aim for one of their faces I didn't know what else to do and it was like fucking bam hashtag I'm still with her motherfucker and <laughs> certainly changed his political outlook I, uh, he could not see out of that eye for about a week oh no Really highbrow start to the show, which I think is fun. <laughs>